I would consider this a simple look, except for the fact that I'm on a red lip. The red lip just changes it up a little bit. What up, it's your girl, Minna, and in this video, we are going to be doing a step-by-step -step eyeshadow tutorial. Lots of requests to do this. I'm gonna show you the foundation session because I feel like it'll be important for you to see it, but it is going to be sped up, chopped up, that kind of thing. So, let's do it. Prime the eyes, I always prime my eyes. I never use concealer, I always use a primer. And I'm keeping my forehead like this because I don't want this to crease. I used to work at MAC. I'm used to using the Paint Pot in the color Painterly, but I've recently been using the e.l.f. Eye Putty Primer. Either one works just as good. White helps you to get the exact color of the shadow that you're using, okay? I'm gonna use the Huda Beauty Topaz Obsessions Palette because it really has all the colors in it for a basic eye everyday brown girl friendly palette and I like it a lot so I'll keep my my foreheads kind of, I don't want this to crease in the crease I always use a transition color the transition color goes right in here so take your brush and press into the area between your eyelid and your brow bone that is called your crease everyone's crease will look different but that is indeed your crease so if I look at you the eye naturally folds. That is not the crease. The crease is right here. So when you're doing your eyeshadow, make sure you are looking down and then take a brush sized like this so that you can focus the first color right into the crease. Usually I look down so that if there's any fallout, it goes down, but I'm trying to show you, so I gotta put my head up, but I'm gonna try to do my best to make sure that I don't get product onto my cheeks since my face is already done. Getting the product, tapping off the excess. Tap off the excess on every single color that you use. With eyeshadow, sometimes the looks will look really crazy and bad up until you actually finish the look. So so don't be worried if it looks too crazy in the beginning. Just get to the finish line and you'll see that usually it comes together if you know what you're doing, if you do it correctly. That's at least how I feel. Now, no matter what look I'm doing, I always use a transition color and my transition color is always a reddish brown. That is just my preference, although I've seen lots of people do their makeup and not use a transition color. And to me, that's tacky, but it's your face. So you should do whatever your heart desires. For me, this is what works. So. I'm switching between windshield wiper motions and pressing motions. See how when I'm pressing, I didn't add any more product. It's just the leftover that is on the brush that I'm pressing in and making sure that there are no harsh lines. And you see that I'm melting it or blending it into my brow bone highlight because I don't want there to be what? Any harsh lines. Sometimes I build this up or I just stop right there. It depends on how I'm feeling, okay? But bring it up to the front part of your eyebrow, but then of course leave the, the latter three quarters of the eyebrow open so that this part is highlighted, but this part isn't. I, remember this is my technique and how I do my makeup and how I would do it on my clients when I was an artist, not anymore. I made sure that from here on was highlighted at the brow bone, but then right in here was not. And I learned that from Rennie Vasquez. That's just what I prefer. Don't carve the brow all the way to the front if you wanna do it the way I do it. I do not like that. I think that is hideous. I just carve it from about here back and obviously you saw that I blended it in and then I'm putting the eyeshadow up toward the front. Then we're gonna go with a brown into the crease. This brown is a warm brown, which I like. I'm not into neutral eyeshadow colors, which on my skin would be considered ashy. I'm not into that like at all. So I like this brown in here because it's warm. Warm meaning it has some red in it, which is just very complimentary to my skin tone. So see how I did the wiping motion? And then I also did the padding to make sure that there's no line right here. It needs to blend, it shouldn't be a harsh line. But I'm actually also gonna take the reddish brown and go right here 
just to give it a further gradient effect. You want there to be a gradient, and I did that softly too, so you're not always pressing the brush into your face. Depending on where you're applying the eyeshadow, you do want to go softly like that, okay? If you're wondering, this is a deluxe crease, br deluxe crease brush from Evita Joseph, but really and truly, any brush that has this shape will do. Want a brush set that I recommend that I've tried? Take a look at my Amazon brush review video where I used all the brushes in that set from Amazon and did my face and it came out amazing. You don't always have to spend so much on brushes to get it to work. It really is a matter of knowing what you're doing. In this crease again, remember I'm staying in the crease area. Push your brush in to find out your crease. Depending on how big your crease is, that'll determine the brush that you use. If you've got hooded eyes, I recommend that you watch makeup artists or watch artists or influencers who have hooded eyes so that you can see how they do their eyes. See, my eyes I wouldn't consider being hooded, so this may or may not be helpful for you. Now, this is really coming onto my lid more than I would like, and I'm gonna clean that up when I go to my lid color. I'm not gonna do a cut crease, but I am gonna open up the lid with a lighter color, and you're gonna see. So here we have the brown that is melted in with the reddish brown. You can really like dark in this up if you want by taking more eyeshadow which is what I'm doing right now taking more always 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 tap off the excess and here we are into the crease yet again to deepen up the crease color patting it right up here so that nothing is harsh lightly blending it now we did a pat and a light blend taking some more of this brown I could make it darker by adding a little bit of black but black is so tricky if you don't if you don't blend black well you're gonna look crazy and I've been there, so I don't use black in my crease often, like really ever. Because What I was just doing now was wiping off the brush onto a clean paper towel just to take off any excess product and then now I'm blending. I could go in with a clean brush. I don't feel like it. I normally just do that. Okay, now a little bit of the reddish brown isn't showing here in the transition. So I'm taking a little, always tapping off the excess and here we go. So now it seamlessly blends into the brow bone so that again, there are what? No harsh lines. I wanna put a little more dark brown just right here. It really makes quite a difference. So I'm just tapping that right here. Okay. Hi. Boom. Oh, and one thing, I'm using the Cinema Secrets brush cleaner in a little container in front of me, but I'm using that to clean off my brushes. I just go like this, da, 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 da. get a tissue, wipe, 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 like so. And really and truly, your brush is clean. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to take a brush that is a little flat. So any brush will do. This one is, I think, from Coastal Scents. Again, something cheap. You gotta just know what you're doing and it's flat. And now I'm gonna go with a color that's a little bit, you can get a beige color if you wanted, or this one is a little bit pinky beige. Ooh, where am I? <laughs> right here, pinky beige. I'm taking a big brush because the point is I wanna cover a big area. So depending on the area you wanna cover, that will determine the size of the brush that you take. I'm switching between wiping motions and patting motions. No need to rush this. Stay right in the area that you're in, get the product on, and then move on. So here I am, and truly, depending on how well you do this step, your eye will look like you did a cut crease when you really didn't do it intentionally. Now, I don't bring the crease color all the way to the end. You could, but that's an entirely different look. I normally like for the end of the crease, or whatever, the outer part of the eye, to look a little bit dark, and then the inner part to look light, but you really could do it however your heart desires, okay? This is kind of a basic look, but every time I say basic, y'all like, excuse me, that's advanced. So I suppose this look is basic depending on your level of expertise or lack thereof. Okay, so I'm stopping about seven eighths of the way, if you will. Tapping off, always, always tapping off, always, always tapping off the excess. And this is a light color I really want it to show. So switching between, and as I'm going left to right, I'm also twisting the brush, okay? So left to right, but also twisting the brush. Taking some more product, you need some time to do this. You can do a quicker look by doing a smoky eye, maybe a brown smoky eye. That'll be done a little bit faster, but you do need to give some time and attention to this 
this so that you get it right. One thing I failed to mention is that how high you're bringing this up. So we're not gonna stop where my natural fold is. This line is my natural fold of my eye. That is not the crease I'm using. So don't ever use that as your crease. Your crease is right here. Take your brush and poke it, okay? That is where your crease is. So bring this lid color, because you have a color that goes on your lid. Then you have the transition color, which goes in the crease, which we've done, we've done two of those colors. So this is the color that goes on your lid and bring the lid color up to your crease. And then we're seven eighths of the way in if you wanna do it the way that I do it, because we're gonna, we're gonna finesse a little bit, you're gonna see. All right, you're bringing it up into the crease. And really when you get up to the crease, the color isn't so bold. It now blends in with that crease color a bit. And that's actually a good thing. Again, you don't want any harsh lines when it comes to your lid color, unless you're doing a cut crease. Cut creases give you a harsh line. It's intentional and cut creases are cute. Cut creases are awesome and they've got a time and a place. But I wanna show you an easy look. Again, easy is relative and I do understand that. All right, and really bring it like inner a little bit like that. It defines the nose in a way. You gotta just practice. The more you practice, the better you'll get at this, okay? So let's just stop right there. I feel like that's good enough. Then I really could use the same brush because I've cleaned it, okay? You don't have to clean it because you're using the same colors-ish, but with the brush cleaner, why not? It dries fast, kills 99% of the germs, why the heck not? Same color, which is the one down here. So right here is where I'm now going to put that reddish brown again. It just like warms up the eye. So it takes the eye from looking neutral or gray or like cool, I guess cool-ish, and it makes it warm by adding this color to the end like that do you see it just spices it up a little bit it makes it a little bit this is a natural look that you could do. Taking some of that reddish brown, I'm actually gonna go right here because that does make a difference too, all right? Very lightly, if you saw, I just dusted that lightly. And try to make it as even as you can. Raheeman, you do the best you can, okay? So there you have that awesome sauce. And honestly and truly, I could take some more of the brown. Now I have the brown on the brush and go right here and deepen out this outer V. We call this the V makeup artist right here because you can do a V motion and put that color there. You could also take a black and go in that area and make it darker. That's nice for nighttime, but honestly and truly, I'll do a black smoky eye during the day because I don't care. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you do whatever your heart desires. But yeah, let's just stop right there and make it simple. Okay, to me this is simple. Mm -hmm. Let's bring these colors down. So to bring them down, I like for the area under my eye to be thick and wispy. Like, I don't know how you say it, like spread out. So I'm using a brush like this. It's a random brush. I think this is an elf brush. You know, it looks like this. It's gonna cover a big area. If you have smaller eyes, smaller under eye area, then use a smaller brush. It really depends on the area that you're trying to cover. So we're gonna do the same thing with the transitions. So we're layering the colors. The first one is that transition color that I used, which is the reddish brown. Taking that down to the bottom in the same fashion. Although there's no crease at the bottom, obviously, I still want the colors to match. This is normally what I do. You could just do a black underneath, like the black eyeliner and smudge it and call it a night, but to me, it just looks way better, much more seamless when you take the same crease colors down here. So we're not taking the lid color down here. We want the lid color to really stand out as the lid color, but we want the crease color to really like circle around and all match. And you'll see that, so I'm gonna do this color and then the brown afterward. So I always bring my crease color down to my lid, again, because it just ties the whole look in together. And this might make you feel like it's messy because I'm bringing it right here, but we're just really opening up the eye and tying everything together. Now that we've done that, I wanna transition the brown color to the bottom of my eye. Now with that, I wanna use a brush that's gonna make it tighter. So the same way that there's a gradient between the reddish brown and the brown, I want there to be a gradient between the reddish brown and the brown at the bottom. So I'm not gonna use that same brush to apply the brown, although sometimes I do, because I'm gonna use 
purple and red stain. I've cleaned this, it's just stained, whatever, okay? So that's the shape of the brush. I'm gonna take the brown, patting it onto the brown, always tapping off the excess, and I'm keeping this tight to my eye. It's a brown, it's not a black, so it's not gonna be that pronounced, but it will make a difference. Like, you're gonna see a difference between this eye and my other one in a second when I finish. So apply it, you're swiping it, you're patting it, you're doing all of the above, and you're bringing it out here to connect to the crease. You don't want to just like leave it. You can in some cases, but let's make sure we connect those two together and bring this really close to the waterline because then we're going to put a black, okay? So you see how there's a difference between this side and this side. So let's bring it over here as well. Okay, I see a little bit of a problem, so I'm gonna just blend. Now we do the black, okay? I don't do wing liner very often because it's just too much work and it's not even necessary. <laughs> like, not always, like why? So what I do like to do is take a black eyeshadow and use it as a liner. Of course, you could use a different color as a liner. There's so many options, but I wanna try and keep this as beginner friendly as possible. So any black eyeliner will do. This one is from Maven Beauty, and I'm gonna just take the black in it with a flat liner brush. This happens to be a MAC 212. I've had this brush for over mm, about 10 years. But any flat liner brush will do and I'm doing a stamping motion. So a stamp and a wipe, stamp and a wipe, stamp, wipe, stamp, wipe. Okay. So now I'm going in a different direction. I could have used a dark purple to do this. I could have used fun color, but the lips are red. So let's keep the eye as neutral as possible. Now that with using an eyeshadow as an eyeliner, it softens the look up a bit. I could have done brown too. It softens the look up. If I wanted the look to be really strong, then I could have used a satin black eyeliner and done a winged liner to really like make it look pronounced. But I want this to be a soft, always tapping off the excess. Now, of course you could stop right there and let your eyeliner like meet your eye shape, but I don't like that. I want to make it look more pointy in a way. We're not going to wing it, but we are going to bring it up a little bit. Let's bring this to an angle. It doesn't need to be perfect, just like lightly. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because you just want it to be a little soft. Is that, does that look squiggly? <laughs> Y'all are real close, okay? <laughs> it doesn't need to be too perfect because we're going to put liner on. And I'm gonna do my lashes before I move down. So when it comes to lashes, I use one and only one. Unless things change, I'll let you know. But I have a favorite that I get from AliExpress. I have the link to it below. So if you are curious to purchase them, they're wicked cheap. It's like $3, I buy them in bulk. I go sit down somewhere. So I always make sure I put mascara on my eyes before I do my eyelashes, very important. I do the mascara first, not afterward. I don't have any desire to do them afterward. To me, it then gets all over the lashes and then they're just gunky and gross. So I do it beforehand and I use the mascara to basically press the lashes together. Alrighty, while my eyelash glue is drying, and if you know, you know. If you know the glue I use, you know. End of story. <laughs> Okay, so we're done with that. And to me, to me, there's no makeup look without lashes. That's just me. I don't do makeup look without lashes. End of story. It makes a huge difference, okay? That's how I roll. That's what I do, okay? Now, bottom lashes are very important, but so is the inner eye highlight. It's a face highlight, but I'm putting it in the inner eye. So right here, this is a defined crease brush from Makeup Geek, but anything small in this fashion will do. And with my inner eye highlight, I really like put it on, okay? I don't do like that and say, okay, go sit down. No, 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 I like to see what I've done, okay? I put a lot and bring it down and bring it up a little bit. And now we do bottom mascara. You know that for ages, I've enjoyed the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. It is still my favorite. In fact, I'll just use that. I was going to use the, the NARS Climax, but this is just amazing. So here we go. A Cosmetic Superhero. And if you really want to pump up the volume on the lashes, let this dry a bit and then add some more. Now I'm squinting because my lashes are now longer than they normally are. So I don't want it to get on my face and make a mess. So you do want to squint a bit until the product has dried, okay? All right, so here we are, we're done. I did my face first, so it just took all of the extra work out of the whole situation. I normally don't spray my face because I either forget or don't need to. And I'm looking at my skin right now, I see nothing wrong. Spraying the face with setting spray is important if you feel powdery, if you feel oily and you wanna look more that, if you feel too dry and you wanna look more oily, you spray. But my face to me looks impeccable. <laughs> I'm not gonna spray anything. Give the video a thumbs up, comment below if you found it 
it helpful tell me if you enjoy this very close up video style and of course the links and description of the products that i've used will be below and i want you to subscribe follow me on instagram because it's a lot of fun watch my ig stories and yeah